I personally don't identify as a transgender woman. I hate the term. I'm a woman. I've allowed myself to be identified as a transgender person because of the advocacy work that I do. LGBT cultural competence historically has not been addressed in medical or nursing education. Real people still face real difficulties in going to uh, seek care. You know, that's something that we can change. Hello and welcome to our webinar, Caring for Transgender Patients. I was asked to create a webinar for the Institute for Johns Hopkins Nursing to provide the audience with some basic information about the transgender patient population and address that cultural competence gap. One of the fundamental issues is that most Americans think that they don't know anyone who is transgender. But it's very difficult to understand and be able to address healthcare disparities if you don't see the population you're trying to help. Conversely, Every patient needs to be treated with dignity and respect. The average LGBT patient is not going to be forthcoming because they're afraid that they're going to be thrown out of the office or they're going to get substandard care. In ED, we're getting started with the annual competency. I'm a little bit unique in that uh, sense so is because I am a practitioner myself. And because of my background of being a naval officer and a lawyer, I am not hesitant to have that conversation. That hesitancy to access health care creates large health risks so that when they do have to access care, it requires much more intervention, uh, much more resources. Now, there, are, there is progress. Here at Hopkins, at the School of Medicine, is trying to find ways to get the LGBT cultural competence infused into the curriculum. Hopkins is participating in a PCORI grant, the Equality Study, a study to try to find a way to be able to actually obtain information about a patient's sexual orientation or gender identity to be able to enhance the quality of care that can be provided in emergency departments. It's one of the things that I think makes Hopkins unique is that the ability to recognize where you have a shortfall and being able to be honest about saying, hey, this is some place where we have a room for improvement, we have an opportunity to grow, is I think part of our enterprise. And I think it's one of the things that we should be really proud of. You know, I was fortunate to grow up with uh, a very strong family that instilled the notion that uh, to those that whom much is given, much is expected. So uh, because I was blessed with opportunity, focused me on living a life of service. So I'm Paul Anira. I'm the nurse educator in the Department of Emergency Medicine. I promise to make sure that every patient that comes to Hopkins is treated with the dignity and respect they deserve and welcomed and provided with the highest quality care.